Hi, in the last episode of this tutorial series, I will uh, demonstrate how to create a basic movement for a sound source within the SPAD environment. So let's go back to our Panoramics um, Max patch. I will make a sub patch again by writing patcher. The idea is to demonstrate a circular movement for a sound source. I will need two inlets. It's a way to communicate with the main patch. Inlet one and two. After that, I need a trigger button by pressing T. I will connect the first inlet with my trigger button. And then I need uh, the object metro. It acts as a metronome which outputs bangs at a regular specified interval. In this case, metro 100 is um, every 100 milliseconds. And then I need a counter which counts from 1 to 100. And in this case, the metronome determines how fast the counter should count. So my second inlet is actually um, to change the tempo of the metronome in the main patch. So let's connect it to the right set. And then I need again um, Zmap, which is um, an object for rescaling the numbers. And it is time from uh, 1 to 100 to 0 to 6.28, which is um, 2p. Um, why I do that? It's because I, instead of uh, counting from 1 to 100, I need to count from 0 to 2p, which is um, a whole circle. So now we are counting uh, in a circular movement from 0 to 2p. And you probably know the formula um, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So we're getting sinus and cosinus as we are counting. By multiplying the number uh, with 1, nothing actually happens, but um, the reason is that um, later on we are going to um, explore some Lissajous curves and figures and that's why we are going to uh, change that number. That's why I need also a floating uh, number box so that I can change that um, multiplying with one with other numbers. And I will make two new number boxes um, in order to observe uh, the changes. And I need to rescale again from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to 127. Minus 1 to 1 because um, sinus and cosinus vary between this range. And 0 to 127 is the middle range. And in the main patch, I will use a picture-based slider um, to track the movement. So let's connect everything and we need two outlets. Let's duplicate it. Cool. Now when I make it on, I see all the number changes and I think it should work. Let's go back to the main patch. And I'm going to rename my sub patch. And as you see, um, because I have two inlets in my sub patch, I have also two inlets um, in this sub patch object and the first one is my trigger button and my second one is the tempo and if i write load miss 50 it means that um, it always starts with 50 and uh, i need a picked slider object yeah it works 
it moves clockwise and if I want to change the direction I can write a message up and down and um, connect it to my counter and it starts to count upward or downward. As you can see, the direction has changed. Now let's make it a bit slower. As you see, it's moving slower because now it's sending every 100 milliseconds a bang and before it was every 50 milliseconds. So if we want to have a faster movement, then we need to reduce the number. Now it's every 10 milliseconds, every 20 milliseconds. Let's go back to the um, Lissages uh, figures. If you're multiplying the sinus or the cosinus by one, then we have a circular movement. If you're multiplying them by other numbers, then we have different curves and figures. You can make really cool patterns and you can read about that um, on the internet. So if the sinus is multiplied by four and the cosinus also multiplied by four, then we have again a circle. But if it's four and two, then you have a different pattern. Now let's make it a bit slower and much slower you can definitely experiment with that um, So yeah, but now you're not uh, receiving the movement uh, in SPAT because as you remember in the last tutorial for um, sending the movement, we used UDP send. The communication in SPAT is always uh, through OSC messages. So for that, uh, we need again a UDP send, but for that I'm going to use another sub patch and again, I need two inlets because I'm receiving basically two numbers. And I'm going to rescale both of them from midi range, which is uh, 0 to 127, to sinus and cosinus range, which is uh, minus 1 to 1. And then I need this object called cartopole, which converts um, Cartesian to polar coordinates. A Cartesian coordinate pair consists of real and imaginary values, and um, a polar coordinate pair consists of distance and angle values. And because in SPAT uh, we are using azimuth and distance, we will need a polar pattern instead of a Cartesian coordinate pair. And then I will divide the result uh, by P and then multiplying it by 180 because otherwise uh, the number remains between minus 1 and 1, which is not the range that we were looking for. And finally, after that, uh, we are ready to send our azimuth. So I write S uh, space azim 1, which means that uh, we will also need an R azim 1 in the main patch. I'm going to connect my inlets here. By the way, the left output is our distance, because after converting via cartopole, um, it delivers the amplitude um, at the left output and the phase at the right output, which is our azimuth. And for distance, let's multiply it with one and a half just to have a um, larger number. Yeah, that's it. Um, so let's uh, rename the sub patch to xy2aed and connect everything and here we need to write um, our UDP send again 
first of all, R as in one, as I said. Let's see if we receive something. Yes, that's great. It needs to be a floating number box. And then we need a message box because we are saying what that number means. It's our stereo one azimuth uh, value and sending it to UDP send, basically our IP address and the port number, which is 4002. Uh, this 127.0.0.1 is basically how the computer communicates to itself. Let's see if we receive something. Turning it on. Yes, that's great. That's cool. We need a stereo track because um, we are addressing the stereo track. I can delete the mono track and see if it works amazing it works but as you see they're going in two different directions um, I think it's because I made this mistake um, cartopole well the left one is uh, the real or the X input and the right uh, inlet is the imaginary or the Y input and um, as our sinus is on the left and the cosinus on the right I made a mistake so I can either swap the cables or use this F swap object cool so now it's working as we expected. Now let's make some leasages curves by multiplying the sinus or cosinus uh, with a specific number. Making it a bit faster. very slow now if you connect it um, to your Ableton you should be able to um, hear the solo track that we were sending through exit 1 and 2 that was the final episode of this series um, I hope you enjoyed watching it and were able to gather some useful information thank you for your attention